What's that noise? Look out! It's Digby's lawnmower! And Spot's driving it! Hello, hamsters! Never mind hello! What are you doing on Digby's lawnmower? Well, it's like the song, isn't it? One man and his dog went to mow a meadow. <laughs> oh, I see. Come on, Morris. Let's sing the song. And you join in, Spot. All oh, right. <laughs> One man went to mow, went to mow a meadow. One man and his dog Ruff. went to mow a meadow. Two men went to mow, went to mow a meadow. Two men, one man and his dog, Ruff. went to mow a meadow. Three men went to mow, went to mow a meadow. Three men, two men, one man and his dog, Ruff. went to mow a meadow. Four men went to mow, went to mow a meadow. Four men, three men, two men, one man and his dog, Ruff. went to mow a meadow. Five men went to mow, went to mow a meadow. Five men, four men, three men, two men, one man and his dog Ruff. went to mow a meadow. Six men went to mow, went to mow a meadow. Six men, five men, four men, three men, two men, one man and his dog Ruff. went to mow a meadow. Seven men went to mow, went to mow a meadow. Seven men, six men, five men, four men, three men, two men, one man and his dog Ruff. went to mow a meadow. Eight men went to mow, went to mow a meadow. Eight men, seven men, six men, five men, four men, three men, two men, one man and his dog Ruff. went to mow a meadow. Nine men went to mow, went to mow a meadow. Nine men, eight men, seven men, six men, five men, four men, three men, two men, one man and his dog Ruff. went to mow a meadow. Ten men went to mow, went to mow a meadow. Ten men, nine men, eight men, seven men, six men, five men, four men, three men, two men, one man and his dog Ruff. went to mow a meadow. Morris. Thank you, Doris. Well, if you ask me, you two make a bit of a racket. We didn't ask you, thank you, Spot. Now, I think it's time you took the lawnmower back to the Magic Garden. Oh, well, Digby will be along in a minute. I'll give it to him. Hey, did I ever tell you about the time Digby made a car? No, I don't think so. Well, I'll tell you now. <laughs> Digby's disappearing car. bright, sunny morning, I found myself all alone in the magic garden. Oh, good, I said to myself. No sign of Digby, no sign of Leroy. Now I can be naughty. In no time at all, I had dug up a row of carrots, six lettuces and a small apple tree. I think I'll make myself a salad, I said. I'd just started munching on a carrot when Leroy appeared out of nowhere on his roller skates. Ha ha ha, he cried. Caught you. I was going to bark at Leroy, but suddenly there was a pop pop sound from the garden shed. Digby, is that you? I shouted. Yes, said Digby from inside the shed. But you can't come in. You'll have to wait. What is that robot up to? said Leroy. We waited and waited and waited. Then, suddenly, the door of the garden shed flew open and out came Digby in an enormous car. Look what I've made, he cried. Digby had used all his garden tools to make a car. He tied rakes and wire netting together and added the lawnmower as an engine. The four wheels and the steering wheel were flower pots and the seats were orange boxes. One door handle was a trowel and the other one was a fork. Aren't I clever, said Digby. I'll give up gardening and drive round and round Magic Mountain in my car. And off he drove without even offering me and Leroy a ride. Days and days went by, and there was no sign of Digby. All sorts of weeds started to grow in the magic garden flower beds. The grass was covered in old leaves, and the birds had a lovely time eating all the vegetables. At last, Digby drove back into the magic garden in his enormous car. When he saw the state the garden was in, he said, Oh dear, what a lot of tidying up to do. But now that I'm so clever, I'm sure I can do it with a magic spell. Do the gardening garden tools, and please remember Digby rules.
with a great bang, Digby's car fell to pieces. All the garden tools he'd made it with flew off round the magic garden. The rake swept up the leaves, the lawnmower cut the grass, the fork and trowel dug up the weeds, and the wire netting covered the vegetables. Oh dear, cried Digby, my car! You're not as clever as you thought you were, said Leroy. Never mind, I chuckled. At least the magic garden's tidy again. To a fairground. What, Dodgem cars and Big Dippers and Coconut Shies? Oh, yeah, super. Well, yes, but I was thinking more of the beautiful, beautiful dancing horses. Dancing horses? Yes, on the merry-go-round. Roll up, roll up, bring your mums and dads and aunts. Hear the fairground music play as the horses leap and prance. See the merry-go-round go round With the merriest sound around Round and round, round and round See the merry-go-round go round Roll up, roll up Every horse must have a rider Dad take this one, Mum take that one Auntie come and sit beside her See the merry-go-round go round With the merriest sound around Round and round, round and round, see the merry-go-round go round, see the merry-go-round go round, with the merriest sound around. Round and round, round and round, see the merry-go-round go round. Doris, I am hungry. Well, go and get yourself something to eat. I always get lost in our kitchen. Oh, Morris, don't be so weedy. Hey, wouldn't it be great if we had a huge big cooking pot that made food for us whenever we wanted? Well, you never know. Listen to Carol's story. The Magic Porridge Pot If there was one thing Lizzie disliked, it was porridge. It's lumpy and bumpy and so dull, she groaned. Then one year, the harvest failed and everyone in the village where Lizzie lived began to run out of food. Before long, Lizzie looked into the larder and saw it was empty. Sadly, she scraped a spoon round her porridge bowl. Oh, if only I had some more, she said. Even porridge would taste nice now. Her mother hurried off to the shops. Sorry, no pies today, said Peter the pieman. Sorry, no bread, said Boris the baker. Lizzie's mother returned home with nothing to eat. What are we going to do? she cried. I'll go into the forest to gather nuts and berries, said Lizzie. So off she went, but finding them was not at all easy. Wearily, Lizzie sat down on some grass and sighed. Oh, I'm so hungry. Then you must take my pot, said a strange squeaky voice. Lizzie looked round and saw an old woman walking slowly towards her. Here, she croaked, pulling an old iron pot from under the folds of her cloak. When you want food, say, boil, pot, boil. Then, after you have eaten, say, stop, pot, stop. Why, thank you, said Lizzie, and she took the pot. She waved goodbye and hurried home. Magic pot, laughed her mother. We'll soon see, said Lizzie. Quietly, she spoke the words, boil, pot, boil. And in no time, the pot hubbled and bubbled and smoked and smouldered. Then it filled with a thick, creamy mixture. Oh, my, cried Lizzie's mother in delight. Oh, no, porridge, gasped Lizzie. But her tummy felt so empty that she ate some. Lizzie's face lit up. She had never tasted porridge like it. Mmm, it's, it's like strawberries and, and cream, she cried, licking her lips. Oh, my porridge is like juicy peaches and custard, smiled her mother. 
Soon they had eaten their fill. Then, while her mother sat back and slept, Lizzie said to the pot, Stop, pot, stop. Next morning, Lizzie had two big bowls of porridge from the pot for breakfast, and she took two bowls for her hungry friends when she went to play at the other end of the village. She forgot all about the time, and by midday, her mother was feeling hungry. Ah, oh, now what were the words, she said. Ah, oh, yes, boil, pot, boil. Once again, the pot filled with the rich, creamy porridge. Lizzie's mother ate and ate till she was quite full. But more and more porridge bubbled in the pot. It began to spill over the top. Oh, um, don't, pot, don't, cried Lizzie's mother in alarm. But the porridge kept on bubbling out of the pot, across the floor and through the open door. Oh, uh, halt, pot, halt, she shouted. Still the pot kept on making porridge. Lizzie's mother climbed onto the table as her chairs floated in a sea of porridge. The porridge spilled out of the house and into the street. It spoiled people's shoes and they climbed into trees or onto sheds as the porridge tide swept on. It bubbled into Boris the baker's shop, covering the floor and flooding the oven. But Boris tasted some porridge with his finger. How odd, he cried. It's just like freshly baked bread. Mmm. This porridge tastes like my delicious pies, thought Peter the pieman, as he sat on his pie tray, which was bobbing up and down like a boat. The porridge swept into homes and out through windows, across gardens, and even turned the village green into a giant porridge pond. All the while, Lizzie's mother shouted, No, pot! No! But of course, the pot took no notice. Then Lizzie saw what was happening. She waded through the porridge until she reached her mother's house. Stop, pot! Stop! she ordered. All at once, the pot obeyed. Oh, what a mess, cried Lizzie's mother. What will everyone say, thought Lizzie. But the whole village was delighted. It's like chocolate cake, laughed Lizzie's friend Lottie as she scooped up the cooling porridge. No, it's like roast beef and Yorkshire pudding, said her father, eating eagerly. In fact, the porridge tasted different to everyone. It was like each of their favourite foods. So the villagers went from feeling glum and hungry to being happy and full up. And they were never short of food again. All thanks to Lizzie's very special magic porridge pot. Hello, Doris. Oh, Spot, you frightened me. Now, have you given Digby back his lawnmower? No. Why not? Because I'm going to jump on it and go down to Magic Mountain Junction. Oh, why are you going there? To see the trains, of course. Listen to Nigel's song. Down by the station early in the morning See the little puffer billies all in a row See the engine driver pull the little throttle Chug, chug, puff, puff, off we go Down by the station early in the morning See the little puffer billies all in a row See the engine driver pull the little throttle Chug, chug, puff, puff, off we go The bus go round and round, round and round, round and round. The wheels of the bus go round and round all day long. The people on the bus stand up, sit down, stand up, sit down, stand up, sit down. The people on the bus stand up, sit down all day long. The conductor of the bus goes ting-a-ling-a-ling, ting-a-ling-a-ling, ting-a-ling-a-ling. The conductor of the bus goes ting-a-ling-a-ling all day long.
The people at the stop shout, wait for me, wait for me, wait for me. The people at the stop shout, wait for me, all day long. The wheels of the bus go round and round, round and round, round and round. The wheels of the bus go round and round, all day long. The people on the bus stand up, sit down, stand up, sit down, stand up, sit down. The people on the bus stand up, sit down, all day long. The conductor of the bus goes ting-a-ling-a-ling, ting-a-ling-a-ling, ting-a-ling-a-ling. The conductor of the bus goes ting-a-ling-a-ling, all day long. The people at the stop shout, wait for me, wait for me, wait for me. The people at the stop shout, wait for me, all day long. Nighty night, Doris. What do you mean? Nighty night. It's not bedtime yet. Um, it must be. Why? Because I'm yawning. Oh, <sighs> don't be so daft. What you need is a waking up machine. What's a waking up machine? Listen to Nigel's story. The waking up machine. <laughs> Once there was a king who overslept every morning, so he was always late for everything, which made him very bad-tempered. He hated being woken up by anyone. That just made him more bad-tempered than ever. The queen bought him an alarm clock and set it for seven in the morning. Tring! went the alarm clock. <coughs> went the king. That's no good, sighed the queen. She sent for the inventor. Make me a machine which will wake up the king every morning in a good mood, she ordered. I'll try, your majesty, mumbled the inventor. And trembling, he went off home and talked the problem over with his puppy, Woofer. I could invent a machine to pour water over the king, said the inventor. Arr, arr, howled Woofer in horror. You're right. That wouldn't put him in a good mood, sighed the inventor. I could invent a machine to pull the bedclothes off him. Arr, arr, howled Woofer. You're right, sighed the inventor. That wouldn't put him in a good temper either. <gasps> what about a machine to tip him out of bed and land him with a bump on the floor? Arr, arr, howled Woofer. You're right, sighed the inventor. He thought again. Wait a minute. Suppose the bed tips him out onto a bouncy, springy mattress. That wouldn't hurt him, but he ought to wake up. Yuck, yuck, agreed Woofer. <coughs> All day, the inventor worked hard. That evening, he and Woofer took the machine to the palace and fixed it to the king's bed. They put the springy mattress on the side away from the door so that the king wouldn't notice it. At a quarter to seven, the inventor and Woofer got up. They peeped through the king's bedroom window and waited. At seven o'clock, there was a great whirring of wheels and machinery. The king's bed began to tip. The king began to slide out of bed. Boing! He landed on the springy mattress. Boing! Up he went. Boing! Down he came. Boing! 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 Oh! cried the inventor. He'll be hurt. He'll be very angry. But... Boing! 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 The king's bounces were getting smaller and smaller. Then... He's still asleep, gasped the inventor. But that means my machine hasn't worked. Oh, dear, the queen will be very angry. Woofer licked the inventor's face. Then he jumped onto the bed and licked the king's hand. <laughs> What's that? asked the king sleepily, waking up. Why, it's a puppy, he smiled. 
He looked around. Why am I on the floor? he asked. By mistake, Your Majesty, said the inventor, hurrying forward. It won't happen again. Uh, what's the time? asked the king. Only just after seven, and I am in a very good mood. This puppy must wake me every day. Well, said the inventor, you shall both live in the palace, promised the king. So that's what they did, and the king never overslept again. Doris, Doris, I'm wide awake now. Why? Because it's rhyme time. Rhyme time? Rhyme, rhyme time! time. <laughs> Hooray! <laughs> A noisy house. All around your house or flat, listen to the funny noise made by each machine you find. You can make them, girls and boys. In the kitchen, hear the fridge softly humming. Then it stops, hum and hum and hum, top, top, busily freezing lollipops. Right beside it stands the mixer. How its whizzing noises linger. Whizz and whirr and whizz, whizz, whirr. When it ceases, mind your finger. Where's the radio? Where's the telly? Hear the music and the voices. Do, I, do, and here's the news. All the channels, all the choices. Push the vacuum cleaner round. Brush the carpet, sweep the rug. Vroom, 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 vroom. Then bump, I think our mum's pulled out the plug. Can you find an old typewriter? Press the keys down, one, two, three, click, clack, click, clack, click, and ding! Write your name or ABC. While you're near to your cassette, click the buttons, start and stopping. Now press play, here comes a story. What's it called? Carrying the shopping. Once a week, Mr. Dixon went shopping. This wasn't easy because Mr. Dixon lived in a house at the top of a very big, green, grassy hill. There were no other houses on the hill, so there was no road, just a footpath. It was quite hard for Mr. Dixon to get his basket on wheels down the hill. It was very hard for him to pull it up again afterwards. Phew, panted Mr. Dixon as he struggled along. I shall have to find a better way to carry my shopping. Next time he went into town, he bought a bicycle with a basket on it. Whee! <laughs> cried Mr. Dixon. It was great going down the hill. Mr. Dixon didn't have to pedal at all. But, oof, panted Mr. Dixon, pedalling back up the hill. This is harder than walking. I must think of a better way to carry my shopping. Next time he went into town, he changed the bicycle for a motorbike with a basket on the back. Vroom, vroom, went the motorbike engine, and up the hill rode Mr. Dixon. Next shopping day, Mr. Dixon rode down the hill on his motorbike. Vroom, vroom, it went, bouncing and speeding down the narrow path. Ooh, cried Mr. Dixon, bumping up and down on the seat. He cried as the motorbike headed for a bush. Ah! Yelled Mr. Dixon as he landed head over heels on the grass. He got up and brushed himself down. He pulled the motorbike up and pushed it the rest of the way into town. As he walked past the zoo, he saw a notice. Animals for sale to good homes. Hmm, thought Mr. Dixon. He sold the motorbike to a garage. Then he bought two large shopping baskets and did his shopping. Then he struggled along to see the zoo owner. Excuse me, said Mr. Dixon. I should like to buy an elephant. An elephant, cried the zoo owner. I'll give him a very good home, promised Mr. Dixon. Where I live, there is plenty of room for an elephant. I'll give him loads of hay to eat, and he can sleep in my big shed, and every day I'll take him for a walk. 
So when the zoo owner had made sure Mr. Dixon really could take care of an elephant, he sold him one called Beppo. Mr. Dixon loaded the shopping onto Beppo's back. Beppo was so strong he hardly noticed. Together they walked up the hill. This is a great way to go shopping, said Mr. Dixon. And it was. Hello, you two. Where have you been? I've been to the Magic Mountain Rink. It's a big dip in the ground where you can practice roller skating all day long. Oh, but I don't roller skate. Oh, well, you should, Morris. Neither do I. Well, you should, Doris. You really should. Listen to my song. What I want to tell you won't take very long. It's all about my favorite way of traveling along. Roller skates, yes, roller skates are what I really mean. My shoes with wheels are so ideal, I can't stop singing this song. I'd like to state the feeling's great. Your feet vibrate, your wheels rotate at such a rate. You're never late for any date, so please don't wait. Just start to skate, to roller, roller skate. I'd like to state the feeling's great. Your feet vibrate, your wheels rotate at such a rate. You're never late for any date, so please don't wait. Just start to skate, to roller, roller skate. Yes! Bye, 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 bye,